Fine-tuning large language models can be tricky because there's so many various parameters and approaches that you can use to fine-tune a model. Sebastian Rashka has run hundreds of experiments and we find out that there are some good tips in here. One of the neat things is that you can fine-tune one of these large language models, a 7 billion parameter on a single GPU within just a few hours. I, that's the that's inspiring. That means that we can do any kinds of things that we want in a very short amount of time. One of the common approaches for fine tuning a model is something called LARA. This is low rank adaptation. Basically what we're doing is we're adding additional parameters somewhere in the model, usually at the end. And what you do is all, all the majority of the model, actually the entire model for the most part, is left unchanged. So all you're doing is adding a little bit of extra at the tail end in order to allow the model to learn new things, but you, won't, you don't want it to forget too much from the past. Keep all the things that you've already learned. And expanding on the Laurel, you can take a step further by using QLaurel, which is just, uh, it, the Q stands for quantizing, which just means that you're gonna take the original model and cut it down a bit, right? You wanna save memory by reducing the precision of the floating point values in the matrices. This will allow you to train more quickly and use less memory. Let's take an example look here at what the quantized Laurel uh, fine tuning looks like. In this case, uh, the default with a 16-bit float will give us, the, we need 21 gigs of memory, which is a lot, most GPUs don't have that. But if you have a really powerful GPU, you might have that much. And the training time looks like we have around 60, uh, well, 6,600 seconds, which is, oh, that's a lot. That's, that's some hours there, some hours worth of training. Um, and then if we look at a quantized version where we reduce this 16-bit float, maybe down by half or down to four bits, you're going to see a significant reduction in the memory requirement. And uh, instead of 6,600, we see, ooh, okay, so we see an increase in training time, but a nice decrease overall uh, in memory. So it seems like 30% 30, 30 slower training time, which is expected. Uh, why is that expected though? It doesn't make any sense. There's like less work for the system to do. I get the less memory, but why does it take longer? Ah, I see here. So in this case, the time to quantize and dequantize in this case is added into the overall training time. Something that we could do up front is potentially just quantize the model initially and then use all of the, the extracted, reduced sized parameters in the training so we don't have to include the quantization in this, in this number, which would be great. That means that this probably is faster. It's just that we don't have the data here showing. Another trade-off of quantizing is in this case that the model can't remember, uh, I mean, like it, get, it forgets things basically. It, it can't, it can't, uh, it performs a little bit less well on some of the uh, just general knowledge. We see here with fine tuning with LARA hyperparameter increasing the R, it seems to be the most important hyperparameter. The problem with increasing it too much though is that you'll have some overfitting, but if you if you get it just right, it will allow you to uh, train the model with fewer iterations overall, and it, it gives you a good output and outcome in this case. There's also a hyperparameter here called alpha, and it looks like Sebastian's describing that if we, uh, have, we just sort of follow this general rule of thumb, when fine tuning an LLM is to set uh, alpha is twice as large as the rank when fine tuning. So we can see here in the chart that Laura with R16 and Alpha at 32, that they have, ooh, look at that. These are significantly better results. Overall, it's the best model in terms of the fine tuned outcome. Here's another neat, neat one. Check it out. We have uh, choosing a different optimizer, right? You have stochastic gradient and distant SG, SGD, and then you also have the atom optimizer. And it, based on it, the outcome here, Sebastian says it makes a little difference. I think, I mean, it seems like in this case, since there's so many parameters, right? 7 billion parameters, the difference between choosing any of the optimizers isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. You probably get more out putting out better results by choosing various optimizers when you have far fewer parameters, right? When you're probably in the, uh, the tens of thousands of parameters instead of billions. Iterating over the training data set multiple times turns out makes a worse impact. The results are, are worse. And, and really, you, you only need to go through their data set once, which is actually kind of cool. I like that because why would you really want to have to continue to 
repeat over and over the data. I guess it depends on your hyperparameters and your tuning. Uh, you know, actually having multiple epochs, right? Say if you have a, in this case, there's 50,000 training samples, uh, and then, you know, just doubling that to 100,000, which means that you have two epochs in this case. Uh, the results came out worse. It's very likely that you could get an improved performance and overall better outcome with different hyperparameter tunings, right? And you, you would allow, uh, it takes longer to go through the data set more than once. Though if you found some, you know, you found like a, a good path forward, you could have a better hyperparameter tunings and allow your model to have better benchmarks overall by having multiple epochs. But in general, we kind of want to get things done quickly. So in this case, a, a single epoch sounds great to me because that means the reduced training time overall, uh, less hardware needed, uh, and. Uh, happily we can go on our way. One of the biggest takeaways here in this case, when you're fine tuning a model overall, you want to target like a very specific use case because what you're going to do eventually is reduce its overall benchmarks for all the other general purpose tasks that it was previously capable of. You need to, those will essentially diminish slightly in favor of your fine tuning objective, right? You want to give it some specific goals to optimize its itself on so it can perform much better on those specific goals and those tasks. In this case, that's the best uh, outcome that you could hope for, fine tuning a model, taking that model and making it your own, right? Making it exactly what you want it to do. In this case, you'll have a really good outcome, but you don't want to use that model for general purpose things anymore. You might want to just go back to the default model itself when you bring in those general purpose use cases.